weird, weird thing going on here. <laughs> no, we were talking about like uh, government or something, and then Haku said, "You know, we should. If, if someone gets uh, gets uh, accused of murder and it's confirmed 100, percent why do we keep them alive? We should just kill them." And then we went into I said, uh, you know, he's saying like they're they're too nice about it. Someone could get away with. Oh, like third degree murder, burning someone alive, and then they'll just get a nice little injection. And then we went into detail what happens if it messes up. Huh. <laughs> huh. <laughs> it's like, what am I gonna say to that? <laughs> this reminds me of why, like when you die in Terraria, and it gives an overly violent description of why you died. Oh yeah, that's always been a funny thing. It's supposed to be a really friendly kid game, and then it just describes that your innards are just all over the place. Ben's innards were turned into outer. <laughs> After being declared unconscious, Lock Lockett was able to raise his head and said, Oh man, I'm not. And according to some sources, something's wrong. Lockett began writhing at 6.36pm oh, and was observed twitching and convulsing. He attempted to rise from the table at 6.37pm and loudly exhaled. So, so this dude was being injected by some sort of lethal injection. It's what so, you get executed with, or so whatever it is. They were trying to do a and lethal injection, but they didn't know where to head to the people who were injecting it. Said, oh boy, this is a doozy. Well, no. So it's like what? So they the the problem is they tried to put it in his arm and it didn't work. So then they tried to put it in his biceps and that didn't work. So then they put it in his uh, groin area. But then they didn't want people to see his groin area as he was being executed, so they put the IV in the groin and then they covered Wait, it. Wait, this was public? Well, like, you know, friends and family can come to execution. Sponsored by Buzzweiser. So, <laughs> so, anyway, the deal is, like, they had they had his, uh, his dick covered up, and then they obviously couldn't see that the IV slipped out. So, yeah, I don't know. So they kept... Constantly injecting him with lethal poison, and no one said anything about it. Well, that's what's normal okay, about it. It might He's... be working. Who knows? Well, We're just gonna keep injecting him. Yeah, the well, they, they do this they all did, the time. They did stop though, so they stopped it. So at 6:36 was when he started struggling and trying to talk. Then they stopped it at 6:56, so like 30 minutes later, and then he died to a heart attack. So. What kind of alien body did this guy have where lethal injection didn't work? I really, yeah, I was gonna say, it's really alarming that they, they put the IV needle twice in his arm and that didn't work. And then they tried to put it in his biceps and that didn't work. Fat? And then they tried to put it into his neck three times and that didn't work. Then they tried the subclavian vein on his collarbone and that didn't work. Then they tried two veins in the foot, but that didn't work. It can just, be a lot of factors, like sad. sometimes you just completely miss a vein, and you're like, well, this isn't working. Well, okay, you know. yeah, yeah, but you, I mean, at this point they've tried, like, five different locations and, like, ten different veins. Oh boy, expert got I'm turned on. I'm thinking about this. Dude, I don't care how bad the thing was, I slightly feel better for this dude. Yeah, I know, right? Oh god, who turned on expert mode? Son of a gun. He was, he was, uh, age 38 and convicted of murder, rape, and kidnapping. Oh great. Nice combo. But was he fat? <laughs> okay, so his convictions were, uh, forcible oral sodomy, robbery, assault, rape, first degree murder, kidnapping, and burglary. Wow. This Thank guy's you. serious. Uh, well he deserved it. Okay, in 1999, Lockett kidnapped, beat, and shot Stephanie Neiman, a 19-year-old high school graduate, friend of Lockett's other victims, and a witness to his crimes. He beat her and used duct tape to bind her hands and cover her mouth. Even after Dating. being kidnapped and drove in Yo, to a I'm dusty going to bed road, soon. Chill. <laughs> Neiman did not back down when Lockett asked if she planned to contact police. After she stated she would go to police, Lockett decided to bury her alive. He ordered her. He ordered an accomplice to bury her while she was still breathing. She died from two wounds from a shotgun fired by Lockett. In 2000, he was convicted of murder rape. He was sentenced to four years in prison on a conviction in 1996 for a conspiracy to commit a felony. And in 1999, murder trial, DNA from the dead victim, fingerprints from the duct tape used to find the victim, and eyewitness testimony led to his murder conviction. 
so how long after so he did the accusations and then how long after did they actually find out about this find um, out what like that he did it or yeah yeah uh, 1999. So literally the. Oh, sorry. He was. So it. It was. Uh. It was. Uh. 1999 was when he kidnapped. He did all the stuff to Stephanie. In 2000, he was convicted, and then his lethal injection was in April of 2014. So 14 years after he was convicted, they finally killed him. Why are people being kept alive that long? I mean, you're feeding this guy. You're you're giving him a place to sleep. It's costing, not to mention that when you're incarcerated, you have to pay, if you ever get out, uh, the amount that you were incarcerated for. Like, what the heck? So, so the reason why is because we are, you're allowed to appeal so many times, right? So basically, if it, it, it's, it's like uh, you can use all of your appeals. So after you've appealed every possible charge and every possible way to step your sentence down, then you're executed. Okay, so, what the heck? Why would you even have a chance to appeal something like this? I mean, it's heinous at its top level. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like, once there's, a, like, once there's really strong evidence, like, I understand if it's all speculation and witnesses. Like, you, you, there's straight up proof you did it. There's I mean, no that's some insane stuff, no but I mean, celebrity. God. Put him, put him in the yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly my thinking. Like, they've got D they have DNA evidence, and they verified it a year later. Bunch of pussies in control of this shit. Uh, not only that, it's just... I mean, remember the refugee camps, and I don't know if anybody remembered this, but there was a girl that got raped by three, I oh, guess, I Iranian or that. something boys. This oh, was yeah. fairly recent, yeah, you but know you know that. And it was like, whoa, how is this happening? How does this even get to that point? I remember that. Well, so the theater shooting guy, so the way that the way they avoid it right now with uh, with everything, uh, like so James Holmes, the guy who thought up the Aurora, that uh, shot up the Aurora theater sh uh, deal, right? His, his, uh, his sentence is 12 life sentences in prison without the possibility of parole and an additional 3,318 years in prison. So even if he, even if he, if he can reduce his sentence on the 3,318 years, he still has 12 consecutive life sentences. So what the heck? That doesn't even make sense. You only live for about 80 years, so I mean, what the heck? Immortality. Well. Oh, like somebody's going to discover, oh, we found the Fountain of Youth. He can now survive that freaking sentence 12 times? Well, well it's more like uh, you could um, you could potentially appeal and get, like, you know, good behavior or something to reduce your sentence. Yeah, so I'm sure it. there's going to be, like, 10 sentences taken off of you just for that. No. Well, yeah, that's the goal with 12 sentences, right? I know, right? I On July... Just to, just to clarify this, by the way... On July, July 16th, after deliberating for 12 hours, the jurors found him guilty on 24 counts of first-degree murder, 140 counts of attempted first-degree murder, one count of possessing explosives, and then sentence of enhancement, or I'm sorry, a sentence, a sentence enhancement of crime of violence. So, I've let him live for 14 years. Right? 100, 140 counts of attempted first-degree murder. Jesus Christ. Genius idea. Let him live for 14 years to think about what he's done. And That's kind then... of dumb. Never, never heard anything like this before. So how'd you guys start talking about this? Uh, well, it went from Shank discussing about how he started T-Shock, and then we just ran off to this kind of subject. Well, no, so let's pause. Okay, so how did this go from talking about T-Shock to, shock to I have a death note, so I wrote Ben Moon's name. Oh, yeah, death note. He's going to die. Not the and then I, he's so going to die, die in the bus wreck. Wreck. And he rides the bus, so it's all good. I'm going to ride the bus tomorrow, and it's not Rest even a normal bus. thing that I ride the bus. Why, do you drive? No, I, um, 17, I never got my learner. 
So. Hey, whatever you do, don't write down in like a journal or something. Someone on the internet told me I was going to die by a bus. If the bus does kill you tomorrow, I don't want to be found responsible. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not like that. I mean, how would, how would anyone know anyway? <clears throat> well, there's well, magical uh, forces around here. Oh no, big brother watching. Well, let me put it like this. If you do die, then I'll know the death notice for real. And then, uh, well, that's how the whole thing starts. Right? Wait, 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 you got a death note? Can you write Hillary Clinton? He's got a death <laughs> note! <laughs> <laughs> that, you're right, great idea, I should write down old day Trump. That would, that would actually do a lot of uh, service to our country. How about you write my death on there too, because I really like to see what I die from. <laughs> you, know, you know that's the problem with dying? You don't know how you died after you're dead. You gonna die today. <laughs> you gonna die, son! <laughs> this is a method a message from the death notification service. You will die in four minutes due to bowel movement problems. Bowel movement problems! Oh joy, I'm not going to the bathroom. When you explode after being Oh great, not again. Hey, it's kinda of like Left 4 Dead. Boomer! <laughs> <laughs> like we should all just play it like Left 4 Dead or something together, some kind of game. Haku, <laughs> we should play some Terraria. Oh God, no! <laughs> Don't go there. Yeah, you guys should join my server. It's uh, uh, twenty-seven. <laughs> it's 127001. It's, it's, no, it's, so you need to install T-Shark by overriding the uh, run DLL 32 DLL in your C Windows System 32 folder with the T-Shark DLL. And then reboot. And then you'll, you'll have T-Shark. Totally so, legit. Totally legit. Mm -hmm. Sounds doable. Yeah. Once you replace run DLL 32, then you'll be great. It'll, it'll work really great. Marcus, I was joking. There, there's a special way to run and You power. don't say! <laughs> just, hey, just turn off your computers and you won't wreck and leave it off of. Yeah, Ishmu, you know what's funny about that is that's exactly how I run my Terraria server. Yeah, I, I've been running one for years now and it's been, it's been pretty great. It's great, it's automatically updated to the latest version, it has no hacks, and it's amazing, so... Every single one of my players has given me 100% satisfaction. Yeah, I have gotten so many donations of, uh, of in-game money that I am absolutely rich. Alright, you guys, we've just taken this bullcrap way too far. <laughs> hey, hey, Hakusaro, do you play uh, TF2? I'm sorry, which one are you referring to? Terraria or TF2? They're pretty different. They said TF2. You and definitely not, not said Terraria first. Two. <laughs> about Team Fortress 2. Terraria F2. Terraria. Uh, I played something like 500 hours of TF2 uh, back in the day. I really love Engineer and Spy. Nice. Mainly because I love playing Engineer for about 8 hours and killing all the spies. And then I really love switching to Spy and killing all the Engineers. That's cool. You ever learned how to trick stab? A uh, regular jump? My, my favorite technique was when the, uh, what was it? Uh, the, that one, the, the knife that cloaks as soon as you stab someone or whatever. Uh, no, not that one. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the disguise one, uh, fuck. That makes you completely silent and completely invisible. Eternal reward. Yeah, there you go. So, so, you, you get that on and you, uh, you set up points and you can run between certain checkpoints that no one ever looks for spies and it's really fun. Uh, but I didn't play much after, I think, 2014. 15? Whenever it came out, plus about nine months. Oh, okay. Well, the best, uh, the coolest technique I see a spy is like, it's called the Malfador. Um, for example, Pyro's M1 engine to you, which is when he runs in a straight line, just hold this button down. And you, you, you get up in, in his face, and he thinks, oh, I'm gonna burn the spy. So you kind of jump to the left, and then you quickly move to the right and stab him in the back from the side while he runs past you. Then you teabag him. And, it, and <laughs> to, the, to the Pyro's perspective, it just looks like he just stabbed you in the face and you died. So, like, you're a hacker. No, I'm not. I'm using... Tricky. You're not good at You're a hacker, but I'm using clever techniques. 
So I wanted to point out that James Holmes was assaulted by another inmate named Mark Dang. Oh, dang it! That's awesome. In uh, at a prison in Colorado, uh, apparently he successfully uh, struck Holmes twice before being subdued by pres prison staff, and now wow. he's been transferred to an undisclosed location out of Colorado. Hmm. Tell me more. Do they intentionally put people in cells with rapists? What? Okay, so so prison rape is a very real problem that they've tried to solve. However, the problem is that the mass incarceration in the United States results in overpopulation of prisons, which makes unsafe conditions fairly normal. Um, the actual thing is that if you do that in prison, you will actually be, like, charges will be pressed against you, and then you'll get a longer sentence, which is hilarious, because uh, rape is actually a bad thing and very serious, and you shouldn't say much. But, however, if you're James Holmes, I think we can make, a, make an exception, because you have uh, 140 counts of attempted murder, so... <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love the prison system? Uh, again, I would like to point out that if you have 24 counts of first-degree murder and 140 more of attempted murder, I think we can make an exception using any unnecessary punishment that you can get. <laughs> again, excuse me, sir, wouldn't it be best to just put a bullet through the guy's head? Just a suggestion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I honestly think they should just send James Holmes to Gitmo. That's my thought. Oh, you know like, what they should do? They should like, get a guy who already has just as many life sentences as him. For murder and then get him to kill him for it. No, you know what? what? Yeah. Prisons yeah. need to have the guillotine. End of story. You know what would be a really effective way to get rid of the leader of North Korea? Assassin. Give James Holmes a ton of guns and then drop him in North Korea. <laughs> no, no. You gotta go undercover as a, a, a transgender and you might just might get into his bed. Oh my god. Wait, why oh, would that be one of your is, goals? The best part about North Korea is no one there has guns. You don't have those rednecks with their shotguns, sniper rifles, and AKs. Dude, I'm serious though. We could totally take. You know what? Why don't we just drop him in like an Al Qaeda base or something? <laughs> oh, God. Like, you know, we had this whole SEAL Team 6 bullshit for Osama. If we had just known about James Holmes, we could have taken James Holmes, thrown him in his compound, presto, problem solved. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Al Qaeda would have been like, well, fuck. Maybe, maybe the Americans really are crazy enough to come and just drop one person in with a lot of guns, and they just killed us. Just throw in Chuck Norris. Of course, knowing that, uh, knowing James Holmes, he'd probably just join Al Qaeda. So I don't know if that would work. I wouldn't want to. No. Mm -hmm. I would not want I would not want James Holmes working with Al Qaeda. Actually, you know what? On second thought, ISIS is worse than Al Qaeda. So, um, you know, anything more to help Al Qaeda win the war against ISIS would be great. Wait, I didn't know that there was a difference. There was a big falling out. So Al Qaeda used to support ISIS. Christ, the there's so many enemies in this. Right? Like, including innocent this hard people. Mode. So Al Qaeda was like, well, that's too extreme for us. So Al Qaeda doesn't support ISIS. 9/11. <laughs> what? Al Qaeda did 9/11, which killed innocent people. That's true. But it killed, it killed innocent Americans. Whereas, uh, as long as it's not innocent Muslims, they're okay. Yeah. yeah, it was when it was when ISIS started being like we like fucking. What was? It? Hold on, I gotta I gotta find the uh, state of this here. Let me find out. ISIS killed Muslim people too. Yeah, especially gays. Great. Fire. And <laughs> no smoking in here. You know, yeah, so the problem is that, uh, the problem is that, uh, AQI, Al-Qaeda, Al is not as apocalyptic as ISIS is. Uh, let's see. After an eight-month power struggle, Al-Qaeda cut all ties with ISIL by February 2014, setting its failure to consult and, uh, sorry, its failure to consult and notorious intransigence, which is not a real word, I guess. So basically, Al-Qaeda and ISIS couldn't agree, so Al-Qaeda said, fuck it, we're out. Now, I don't know if this is a myth or not. But I heard Kim Jong actually went to an American university. No, he didn't. 
No, he didn't. At one point. The son okay. of a bitch never left! Why didn't you just fucking heal him when he did that? Because he never left his country? Yeah, that's um, a myth then. Alright. There's a lot of reasons why we don't just get rid of North Korea. It's not more complicated. No, see, in reality, the real problem with North Korea is that we haven't been calling them by their true name, which is Best Korea. <laughs> Best Korea? Or do you oh, yeah, with? have you seen, like, one of the videos about how many lies Jim Carrey has told? Like, Wait, Jim Carrey? Whoa, 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 Who is Jim Carrey? Uh, sorry, <laughs> but, um, what? <laughs> 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 Jim called in. Jim what? King in? <laughs> oh god. Okay, everybody, I would just like to PSA. The current leader of North Korea, his name is Kim. It starts with Kim, then goes Jong, and then goes Un. Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. Kim. Speaking of what, King Kong, and his name is King Jim. Kong. <laughs> No, it is not Jim Con Un. That is, that is wrong. Jim. <laughs> Jimmy boy, how's it going? <laughs> I'm gonna still call him Jimmy. Jimmy, my cool <laughs> fan. What's up? <laughs> Christ, I can't mind this mithril. Screw you, Kim Jimon. <laughs> If we just cut off, you know, all imports of Twinkies, I think they'll surrender to us. No. You know, it's funny, he's the most fattest person in there and everybody else is starving. Yeah, Okay. So socialism. So, I mean, it tells us so, what it does. No, in reality, the, the fact of the matter is that it's, a, uh, it's such a huge problem that... The, the problem with North Korea is so multifaceted that it is, it, basically, there is no good move. Like, if we were to invade North Korea and take out Kim Jong-un, he's brainwashed the entire country into believing that we're literally, like, the Antichrist. And even if we were to convince them by, like, bringing in tons and tons of food and all that jazz and da-da-da-da-da, I don't know that we would actually win the country over, and I think it would be very hard. And it would be a very huge humanitarian problem once we find out that literally everyone there is starving and they have no infrastructure. What if we just took it in a psycho? Alright, the simple problem here is that North Korea should technically be an expansion of South Korea, and they should just simply assassinate Kim Jong Un. That's it. What? It's up to it's up to South Korea to fix them up. So they've they've brainwashed the the people that are in power and the military leaders and basically the entire anyone that has any worth in North Korea to believe that uh, if anything were to happen to Kim Jong Un, it would tear, it's a conspiracy by the West to take over North Korea and get rid of everybody. So you're, the first step is to you need to not have brainwashed people that would believe that anything we do to come in and help them would be treated as basically we're trying to fuck them over, like. The problem is that you don't want to piss off a lot of people you're trying to save because they will do everything they can to ruin your day. Like, you know, you could bring in all the humanitarian aid possible and all the food trucks you want, and they'll blow them up if they think that they're actually carrying bombs. Or they'll kill your doctors because they believe that you're actually trying to, like, poison them. By so just them. capture those, put them in, like, a rehabilitation facility, and the people that really do need the help, they, they, they can be rehabilitated to be, you know, normal. Yeah, see, we don't know who those are. That way we, we don't, don't have Asian terrorists. It's impossible to know exactly who in North Korea is in the position of being brainwashed and who is, like, we are under the impression that we are being controlled. Like, they don't have access to any foreign media. If you have foreign media, you're put in prison for 10 years. And they have no access to the internet, no phones, nothing. They use so, Windows 3 still. Trying to get people... No, they don't. They use Resistar and they use Windows XP. It's actually true. China stuff. But... You try to get people to, uh, trying to get people into basically the awareness that there are places besides North Korea, like, it's hard. And the other thing is, I don't know that any country really wants to do it. Uh, South Korea maybe, um, US maybe, China held out, uh, China already has enough problems trying to feed their citizens. There's a reason why China is so totally fine with having really, really low, uh, 
like really, really low amounts of payback from the U.S. debt because again, China is basically under a, a non-self-sustaining system. China can't afford to pay anyone, and it can't afford to give food to everyone. So the the way that it's operating is basically like this sort of infinite, like trying to create as much food and as much GDP as possible in order to sustain the actual country. So they have such an uncontrollable population. Ah, got away. Jesus. They you will never implement commie or capitalism. They'll be fine. That would not solve the problem either. There's too many people. Way too many people. There's there's a certain collapsing level. Like if you look at the chi the population of China versus America, like America is still not functioning 100% correctly. And if you were to just swap in something in China, it would collapse the entire thing. You would have a, a global humanitarian crisis and suddenly there would be no market for creating any goods. It would cause a worldwide collapse of everything, which would be an interesting thing to see. However, I don't think anyone really wants that. The, the truth is that if you want to solve the problem well, I mean, with China, you need to establish an actual system for giving people humanitarian aid that if you were to take something out, like if you were to switch the government to something that's more democratic, you would not have an immediate collapse of everything. Right now, you would have an immediate collapse of everything. Like if you, uh, like every Chinese worker is being paid under minimum wage, but they have food provided to them by companies so they don't die. Like if you suddenly had to pay them minimum wage, there would be no way for them to buy food because they would be able to afford housing. I mean, it's kind of run by a bunch of psychopaths anyway. So why don't they just population control there, since they're already evil? The dudes on top. They do have uh, population control, uh, and it is horrible. Uh, actually, I don't think they still do. Um, someone should clarify whether or not that one child per family policy is still in effect. No, I mean, like, I'm talking about the more morbid thing. Just just killing people off yeah see you still have a gdp problem you would you would if even if that was like a viable solution if you were to get rid of like half of china you would cause a worldwide collapse of all economies because like 90 percent of everything is produced in china because of the way for, that it's so cheap so if you had if you increase the value of chinese labor you would literally cause a systematic collapse of every like every major economy in the world well, yeah, but they can negotiate with everyone. Hey guys, heads up about to kill half of China. So, uh, it's yeah. not, it's not like a they though. It's, it's every, it, like, it's every capitalist company. You try to, I don't know that you'd be able to find Americans that would work. And like, you would, you would cause a lot of American companies really quickly too. Because American companies don't have the amount of money required in order to pay American wages to every person they need to pay in China to make stuff. Like, Apple probably could do it. No, Google probably do it. I don't think that you like once you get off the table, there is not a lot of American companies that could afford to pay American minimum wage to all Chinese workers or all workers in uh, America. And if you lower corporate taxes, then you have another problem because the uh, the infrastructure in the United States would go down the tube. But then again, the infrastructure is already going down the tube, so you can argue that's not a big deal. In reality, though, it would, at least as so far as how we have the world now, lead to a complete collapse if anything were to happen to China or the United States, for that matter. Since the United States is the biggest buyer of Chinese goods and China is the biggest producer of American bought goods, it's a catch-22. And that's why we'll never, ever go to war with China. Because if, if either country started to disagree, it would cause a systematic collapse of both countries. Fairly wow. I think talking about race really is <laughs> interesting to Really? Giggity giggity goo. Okay. Now I'm I'm interested in this shit. Like government econ and it is interesting. my favorite classes in school. <laughs> See, I, the way that I look at it is like, if you look at it from As the always, guys, perspective don't be a dick. of just economies, and, quit and you just only look at economies, guys. it gives you pretty good reason. In the next video. Until then, bye-bye.